Hello, brothers and sisters in the Lord. It is so good to see you. It's so good to be with you once again. I, I can't tell you enough how how much joy I feel to be getting back to work or, or having work to do for the Lord and for his kingdom. I just can't tell you how overwhelmed I am. I, I've been looking for this day for quite some time. Pretty much uh, encapsulated in, in this greeting I put, thank you for not forgetting about me, wanting to fellowship with me through the Holy Spirit who binds us together in the body of Christ. Uh, you are the fruit of my labor in the Lord. May God get the glory in Jesus' name as he increase and I decrease. That's what it's all about. Um, so, as you know, if you've been watching this ministry for quite some time, there's been a hiatus. So I'm just going to go over a little bit about what has been happening between the, my last video and where I am now, how the Lord has cultivated me, how I've matured even more with what the Lord has taught me, and some things that we're going to where we're going to take the ministry as the Holy Spirit has guided uh, my heart and guided this ministry to go. Uh, it is all His work, His teaching. I'm just a vessel. Uh, no different than how the Lord had a donkey talk in, in the Old Testament. It's no different. I'm just a vessel. Um, so briefly, disclaimer, <laughs> I want to go over what happened? Why did I drop off? Uh, we want you to remember also, folks, that it's not its not me who's in control. You know, this is the Lord's ministry. And remember in the gospel, the Lord was held back up until he was 30 years old. That's when his ministry started. It's all the Lord's time. If God wanted Jesus Christ to start preaching the gospel as soon as he learned how to talk, he would have. But the Lord had reserved him until the time he was 30 and then preached the gospel for three years and then went on to another phase where the apostles went out to go preach the gospel to the Gentiles. So everything had to be ready and every every person had to be where they needed to be so that uh, everything could be as the Lord wanted it to be, as it was prophesied so that his, his word would be true. So it's all in the Lord's timing. He gave this ministry from the time in which it started. And if you watch the beginning of my ministry, it, it was just simple Bible studies. And then he profoundly opened my mind and my eyes to mysteries and, and in terms of revelation. And it just went off to this other place. And that's where it's been. And then he we pulled me back because my computer broke. <laughs> my computer broke. I had a uh, cheap computer. It broke. And... Um, you know, just couldn't afford to get another one. And uh, after that, after that moment, my I had developed bronchitis. Oh, that was the first time I ever had bronchitis too. And that was about two months of wheezing and inhalers and medicine. And oh, I never want to go through that again. So uh, even if the computer worked again or I got another computer, I couldn't talk because I had this bronchitis, coughing every 10 seconds. Um, so again, it's like, I, I kind of got the hint, you know, cause I was like off going frantic, like, oh my goodness, I, I don't have the computer. I'm not doing the ministry work. Oh, what am I going to do? I don't want them to leave. And, and then I developed bronchitis and I just had this reassuring peace and, and, and comfort knowing that the Holy Spirit was in control, you know, that everything was working according to plan. And as I, as I had that feeling, okay, everything was working according to plan, and the Holy Spirit is the one really at work here, I asked the Lord, well, how can I still be used? He says, I can't talk. I don't have anything to do for the ministry. Well, what, what do you, where am I going now? Where are you taking me now? So, being led by the Spirit, I then went and became a member of a church. A church I've been going to for quite a long time, since in high school. But I finally became a member because all through last summer, I've been telling the pastor, look, the Ten Kings, Queen Elizabeth, if possibly been fulfilled, Revelation 17, everything I pretty much told you. And time and time again, the pastor would say, get engaged, get involved, get engaged, get involved, get engaged. Are you a member? No. Get Become a member. And I can imagine. I mean, he's... He, he's a very busy person uh, of, a, of a church, and everybody wants his attention. So he has to kind of weed out who's really serious that he should invest his time with. And I guess one person you can invest your time with is someone who wants to become a member. 
So I became a member. And after I became a member, he said, getting, I went back to him and said, hey, 10 Kings, Queen Elizabeth, in time. I said it before it was on television that it was talked about, blah, 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 blah. And um, I, he said, get engaged. So I then joined a group, a, a ministry group within the church and which uh, I fellowship with other brothers saying the same thing. But the thing about it also is that the Holy Spirit has allowed me to learn uh, or have the brothers that I fellowship with reciprocate what I would give to them. So I would come and give to them and share with them why the Lord led me there, what I'm there for, explaining them about the Ten Kings and Queen Elizabeth and Pope Francis. And then they would then re regurgitate to me whatever it is the Holy Spirit would talk or lead us to talk about or whatever the Bible study would be, uh, the topic would be on. And I'm, I'm telling you the truth that I've been ministered to in that method, in that way. And not just in not just in topics that we talked about in church with this small group of brothers that I fellowship with, but that I see that not everyone is going to respond to the urgency of prophecy being fulfilled as we see it happening as I am. And I'm going to minister about that to you in a whole nother topic, but I just want to shed some light that if you guys get really excited and amped up like I do when you see this happening right before your eyes, don't be discouraged when other Christians aren't e equally excited and amped up as you. Don't get discouraged. Don't judge the heart. Uh, let the Lord sort out and let the Lord do his will. But just know that you sent your message because in this whole hiatus, I've learned that it's a lonely road. It's a lonely road. The prophets, if the ones who came before us, it was a lonely road for them. Who went and told them what the Lord had showed them and what the Lord had said and Israel just didn't listen. It was a lonely road and we are part of that legacy. We are part of that legacy in which we're telling folks what the Lord has showed us that will come to pass, giving evidence that it shall come. And many believers just won't listen or take it serious. Some will, some won't. But don't get discouraged. Don't be doubtful and don't be, get upset about it because we're part of a legacy that happened before us. All right. Just do your job. Because if you go back to the example that the Lord really gave me understanding about, this whole thing, because I used to get all discouraged and frustrated. Why aren't they listening? So to be Christian, how come they're not excited? One thing I noticed, there's two type of responses. There's a response that a Christian will take it in and it will just simmer. And I'll let the Holy Spirit touch their heart to really get involved at, at the Holy Spirit's time. But then there's a other Christian who will hear it and don't want it, don't want, don't want to hear anymore, rejects it. Uh, um, totally uh, uh, makes up excuses about it, but let the Lord will be done and just you, just do your job and get the message out. Because in the parable of the five wise, five, five wise, five un unwise virgins, if you read that passage, we are the guys who, the, we are part of the guy in that parable who went before the Lord saying, uh, the bridegroom is coming, the bridegroom is coming. We're part of his his, we have what was in his heart to do. We have his duty. So what the Lord had tasked that man to do, to go before him and say, the bridegroom is coming, the bridegroom is coming. He has tasked that guy's duty and our hearts. And if you look at what that guy did in that parable, when speaking to the unwise virgins and the wise virgins, he didn't sit there and keep on convincing him, talking blue in the face and and, and, and bring up evidence and, and stay there and keep on trying to convince. He didn't do that. He said what he had to say to those who were waiting or those identified as virgins, Christians, and he went on. Let the Holy Spirit distinguish who's going to be wise and who's going to be unwise at the wedding. But our job is to get the message out, go to the next block, get the message out, or in other words, get the message out, Speak it to whoever the Holy Spirit leads you to speak it to. Go to the next one and so on and so on and so on. So don't get discouraged, folks. But I'm going to hold, have a Bible study and minister about that in a whole other topic. Because I think I think the Holy Spirit wants you all to have guidance with all this profound revelation of wisdom. Because you're going to need it. Just like I needed it. Uh, believe me. Believe me. And I'm only so thankful that he's able to use me that we all can do this together. Um, so... 
in the in that hiatus, I also uh, was, I can't say that I was led, but I just wanted to, felt like I did enough. Um, that if the ninth king came and the people who I spoke to didn't listen, I took 300 letters and mailed them out to six churches or in 50 states. So the capital of each state, six churches surrounding that state, I would, uh, six churches surrounding the capital, I would mail churches, mail letters to those churches, telling them everything I told you all about Pope Francis, the 10 King, watch out for Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of Denmark, before they get turned over, blah, blah, blah. I said, and send it out. Just so that if the ninth King came, my conscience would be clear that I did enough for the Lord. Because remember the story of the uh, talents. Uh, a master gives one talent to uh, a certain servant, another talent to a certain servant, another one to a certain servant, three servants in total. One, ta one servant goes out and brings back a return on investment. Another, I'm paraphrasing. Another servant goes out, gives, brings a return on investment. Uh, another servant doesn't do anything with the talent that the Lord gives when he buries it. So when the master comes back, he collects the return on investment from the first and the second servant. But when he gets to the third, the third servant makes up an excuse, makes up an excuse thinking that the Lord would be satisfied with that excuse. But the Lord couldn't be fooled. His master couldn't be fooled. He said, you're nothing but a wicked and lazy servant. And so much the master says, you could at least took that to the bank and let it collect interest. And that means, and that means that the Lord... You, in the Lord's eyes, you could have done the bare minimum and it would have been acceptable to him. So I just wanted to have a clear conscience knowing that I did the bare minimum and just mailed off letters to 300 churches, 100 for the Father, 100 for the Holy Spirit, 100 for the Son, to six churches in the capital of each state. And just so that I know that I did something and let the Holy Spirit collect the interest on for the Lord. It, that's kind of like... Uh, the metaphor between uh, the metaphor around that. So now, since I'm back, I, God willing, thank you. I have a brand new computer, amped up processor and webcam, and I'm I'm suited up, thank the Lord. So I'm ready to get back to work, and I'm so thankful that God gave me work to do. I'm so thankful, and I pray that as you continue to fellowship with me, and you haven't forgotten about me, that the Lord can give you work to do. Ask him for work. His work is fulfilling, and it fills you up with purpose and, and drive. So what's new? First thing I want to talk about is I'm now connected. I was really apprehensive about getting involved and plugged in because we have such a culture now in our country where it's all it's all about self. It's all. I mean, even God, we take pictures called selfies. I don't know how much self-indulgence could you get by selfies selfie selfie so I, I was kind of apprehensive about jumping on facebook and google immediately but i start to see how the lord was really working through it so i'm now can be found on facebook and google if you want to go to facebook just um type in watchman watchman the watchman ministry seven or you go to google plus and you could uh search for watchman brooks and we can pick, pick up conversations there or we can uh discuss whatever it is you want to talk about or i can talk about uh, i can take a topic from what you want to talk about bring up on a Bible study on YouTube and go from there but I just want to add, have a community I can fellowship with at any given time through the most popular mediums which I've found to be Facebook and Google Plus I'm not interested in Instagram because it's not about me no one needs to know a picture of me or what I'm eating or or some dinner I eat at a restaurant I mean how did you grow spiritually from that you don't it's it's pointless and I, I, I'm so I'm not in Pinterest and I, I don't, I, I, I try to Twitter, but I don't see the point. So I like being able to have the freedom to say whatever it is I want to say, talk to whoever I want to talk to and not be constricted to, to 148 characters for, for no reason. Uh, but anyway, so I figured that uh, if you all want to uh, c connect with me there or in other believers with who's involved with this ministry, I think it's a really useful tool. Uh, I think everyone, the whole body collectively will be able to uplift one another. Uh, folks that we have, folks that I have communicated with from Britain, some in Singapore, some in Nevada, uh, Arizona, and, and just us together, watching together, encouraging each other together, learning together the Lord can be praised and the Lord be glorified in the process. Plus we can get the word out collectively telling people what to watch for. Also, I'm going to be talking about the signs of the times. We all know about the uh, 10 toes relating to the 10 horns as it relates to an example of 10 signs in Egypt. 
before they were taken out. So, you know, that pertains to the coming of the Christ, but the first has to be these signs of this 10. And we know that the 10 is in relation to the 10 royal families in in Europe, which leaves Queen Margaret of Denmark and Queen Elizabeth of England. These two are the only remaining. So we're going to still be watching the signs at a time and divulging information about that. But before I get into that, one thing I want to mention to you, if you remember uh, something I want to bring up, I'm going to just tell you how the Lord is so faithful, folks. So remember I told you, if you looked in my Bible study, you'll see that May 6th, I talked about um, the Holy Spirit led me to read, led me to read Revelations in which I explained so Revelation 17 is happening now. That, uh, that Pope Francis becoming the Pope fulfilled Revelation 17, 11. And Pope Benedict also is that he, Pope Benedict resigned and was the phrase, he fit the prophecy of the phrase, the one that should be there for a short time. So that happened on May 6th. I, I produced a video on YouTube and it came out. And then on May 8th, uh, it came out again on the news confirming what the Holy Spirit has taught me. And let me tell you how God is so faithful. So all since May up until the end of the year, I just kept teaching and teaching and saying it and saying it. Christians, churches, pastors. I randomly call pastors and say, listen, 10 Kings, be careful. Watch it. Warn your congregation. Warn the bride. They need to, be, they need to know what's going on. Ah, I would tell them this. And I met so much discouragement, so much discouragement, because I didn't get the response that I thought I would hear from Christians. It would be, I don't want to talk about that. No, nah, I'm really not believing you. Oh, okay, well, you don't have a degree. You don't have a title. You don't have a position in the church. Who are you? How do you know this? You know, I just, I just overwhelmingly discouragement from, from, from my own brethren in the Lord that at the turn of the year, I said, Lord God, please. I said, please let me know that you have taught me what it is you have taught me and that it is true what you are showing me. Because I was just filled with so much doubt at that point. And remember the story of Gideon of the fleece? God told Gideon he was going to win this war. Gideon had a little bit of doubt. Asked God to confirm it by making a fleece filled with water. Next morning, the fleece was filled with water. And Gideon said, Lord, please, I hate to ask you again, but so make the fleece dry. And then uh, under the fleece, it was dry the next morning. So God confirmed what he said twice. So I took it upon myself to do as Gideon did and ask the Lord to confirm it. So after I did that at the beginning of the year, the Lord is so faithful, folks. Uh, I'll show the clip, but I'll show you the news article and the link above me. That when I asked that prayer for God to confirm with me that he did tell me what he showed me. And, and he did. Re it is real what he's revealing about a week later, it came out on the news. I wasn't even looking for it, folks. But a week later, it came out on the news. Uh, Queen Elizabeth prepares Prince Charles for uh, king. It came out on the news, and I just, I was just astounded by it. Like, wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I needed that. So that confirmation gave me the encourage, the encouragement to keep pressing forward until I come to see you guys again. So we're gonna keep talking about the signs of the times. And mind you, remember in Acts 2, we talked about that it's in sequential order, these different events. And one of the events has to do with blood moons, and the moon shall be turned to blood, and that's upcoming. The first one being April 15th. But in relation to the blood moons also, we're specifically, we're watching these two queens. These are the only two left, Queen Elizabeth and Queen Margaret of Denmark. So we're watching with them. And most importantly, we're watching this guy. Uh, Pope Francis. Pope Francis um, is the one who's the eighth king in Revelation 17. He's the one that came after the seventh. He's the beast, the false prophet. So we're going to be still watching him. And because we're watching Pope Francis, we're also watching for him to become the prophesied white horse. We know that he is the white horse of Revelation 6. So that's one thing we're going to be watching too. The transitioning between when he is who he is to when he becomes this white horse. Because when he becomes comes the white horse then we'll be able to see the guy who sits on him and when he gets then when we say the guy that gets sits on him we're going to get watch him get fit with this crown and then the bow and then every, it all just started moving like clockwork guys but this is what we're doing i'm giving you all a layout of how we're approaching this we're also going to be talking about end time phases uh letting the holy spirit the teacher put in order what we've put in out of order now here's the thing i mean with no disrespect to any believer for they are they are my brethren and i love them in the lord but here's one thing folks if you're seeking wisdom from the lord and one who's teaching you about the book of revelation 
and eschatology. If they're teaching it to you from chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to the end of the book in sequential order, they're already teaching it to you wrong. Here is why. Because Revelation 17 is happening now. Revelation 17 is happening now. But Revelation 6 has not happened. So as the Holy Spirit, not me, I didn't put Pope Francis where he is. And I didn't crown these king queens to step down to become kings. So it's not me who's saying this. The Holy Spirit is showing us that Revelation 17 is happening now. So if you take the wisdom of someone who's not telling you 17 is happening now, you're already on the wrong track. You're already on, you're reading it through human intellect, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, and so on. But the Holy Spirit can write that book out of order and still be in order because he's God. He can do that. Here's a case in point. Go to the book of Matthew, I believe, the first chapter of Matthew or the first book of John, Matthew or John, the first chapter of Matthew or the first chapter in John. I'll put the correction right above me. But if you read the book of uh, that first chapter in the order in which it happens, the events happen, you'll see that Jesus was, I believe, he was born, went to Egypt, and then the babies went, uh, the babies went, the, no, he was born, babies came to be killed, and then he went to Egypt. But if you read, that happened in that order. And then you read the prophecies in which it was given, they were out of order, in which it was like Malachi first, Jeremiah second, and um, uh, I have to really put this in a Bible study, but the, so I make sure I tell it to you correctly, but it's either in the book of John, or the first chapter of Matthew, or the first chapter of John, the events that happened when Jesus was born, the events that in which it happened was given out of order when they were prophesied. So it goes to show you that the Holy Spirit can give prophecy out of order just for the events to happen in order. So we can't look at the book of Revelation and read it in order and think that the prophecy is going to be in order as well. He can do it any way he wants. We have to see how he's doing it because every way he does it is right. So that's just something we're going to talk about as well. We're going to piece this all together from the seals to the trumpets to the bowls so that we can have a full understanding of what's going on in the way in which the Holy Spirit is showing us, not in the way we want to see it or the way human intellect and human logic has trying to we're trying to put the holy spirit in put him in our in our in our human logic and, and say this is what he's doing so we're going to talk about that we're also going to talk about this notice that jesus says that in the last days shall be like the days of noah and the holy spirit really pressed my heart to share with us share this with you folks but why did jesus pick that moment besides fallen angels and nuts and such but what is it about noah's experience that shall relate to the uh the return of christ i mean it makes sense that the lord would put the end of mankind to be foreshadowed from something that happened in the beginning of mankind but i feel like there's a lot more the holy spirit can teach us from noah in terms of telling everyone warning everyone in terms of the following the instructions to build the safety to survive the cat catastrophe uh, and, and, and the judgment of god um, and in terms of also the, the each animal coming in and the purpose behind that. So I think there's there's a, a wealth of wisdom behind this than the last day, last day shall be like the days of Noah. I think there's going to be a wealth of wisdom behind it. So I'm going to let the Holy Spirit reveal that to me and I'll reveal it to you. And then we all can be blessed about it or we'll be blessed from it. I um, also want to talk about the evidence uh, of the Bible. Uh, I did a Bible study previously, these two, on Noah's Ark and Sodom and Gomorrah. But I'm also going to continue this because it really, it really excited a lot of folks, surprisingly. They didn't really know or hear how Noah's Ark was found or Sodom and Gomorrah. And I found that so surprising. Uh, so I figured I would just keep going with that as well. So we're going to talk about that. And this one right here is the evidence of um, Moses crossing the Red Sea. These are... Egyptian chariots found underwater along with uh, spokes and an axle found underwater. This is a uh, eight wheel spoke as well, uh, which is only found in Egypt or ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics showed their chariots to be like this. 
We're also going to be talking about false teachers speaking to those with itching ears. Uh, this comes from the uh, Second Timothy, where uh, people prop up for themselves teachers with because they have itching ears, turning away from the truth and sound doctrine just so they can hear what they want to hear. Pope Francis recently did that. Pope Francis spoke to no, actually Pope Francis sent a ambassador priest. Uh, his name is Bishop Father. See these titles, man. Oh my God. Oh, uh, Bishop. Father Tony Palmer, uh, he sent him to uh, Kenneth Copeland, where Kenneth Copeland had like a leadership conference to be able to speak to different or hundreds of different uh, uh, pastors of many different churches were there to hear Kenneth Copeland introduce this guy who is Bishop Father or Father Bishop Tony Palmer, who was sent on behalf of Pope Francis to unite. That was the whole theme. The whole theme that this guy said in quote, uh, this priest here, Palmer, said to the pastors, and they all applauded. The pastors all applauded, and no one rebuked them. He said, who here is born again? And people raised their hand. He said, well, if you're born again, you're Catholic. Excuse me? I don't remember that being in Scripture. I thought I was a Christian because I follow Christ. I didn't know I follow something universal because Catholic means universal. I thought I follow, I follow, I thought I follow Christ where he says the path is narrow, not broad and universal. So that's something else I'm going to go into. But the whole point is that now we're seeing the deception coming. We're seeing how Pope Francis are sending his emissaries to different Christians to be able to suck in Christians to this deception. And it's just going to it's just going to snowball at such a fast rate. And not surprising. I wouldn't believe I wouldn't be too surprised when other uh, false teachers who just say whatever it is that people want to hear and put Christ at the end of it and word of God and amen and people just praising I wouldn't be surprised that Pope Francis seduces uh, other false teachers to do the same thing get sucked into this deception to unite to unify as if Satan can't do that which he did in the Tower of Babel and you go to the last chapter or the second to last chapter in Revelation he gathers them together to make war against the saints as if Satan can't gather people it's, it's just mind-blowing but anyway we're going to talk that we're also going to bring up um, how Ezekiel 38 prophecy and talks about how Russia uh, it talks specifically about Russia and its allies and how it's moving into place so we're going to be focusing on what's happening there because what happened recently with Russia taking Crimea that's biblical folks uh, here's a certain map I'm going to try to zoom in for you here's a certain map that if you read Ezekiel 38 one of the things that it talks about is Gomer that this place Gomer is an ally of Russia that goes to move in against Israel. Well, Gomer is right here over this small island, which is Crimea, that Russia just recently took over. So we see that all these different allies of Russia will be working together to go against Israel, and God's going to just demolish them to prove the world that He is God. So we're watching this happening in the news right now, so I just thought to bring it to your attention as well. Uh, that's something else we're going to look at. We're also going to look at Daniel 11. Uh, Daniel 11 prophesies how the king of the north will fight against the king of the south, who's Egyptian. So another, but there's no Egyptian king now in Egypt, so there has to be one. So we're going to be watching. We're going to be looking for Egypt to be, get this this king. And once it becomes this king, then that's going to be in place for Daniel 11 to be fulfilled, just like Russia's moving into place for Ezekiel 38 to be fulfilled, just like Pope Francis and his Queen Elizabeth and all these kings are moving into place for seven. So everything is just like moving into place, and we're looking at it from a panor panoramic point of view now, a, a wide point of view. We're having a we're having a, a vantage point where we want to see all of this. That way we can give as many as many believers as the Holy Spirit leads us to speak to evidence after evidence after evidence after evidence and just go keep it moving just just like the the guy that went before the Lord saying the bridegroom is coming keep it moving so that's what, all, that's what we're also going to do um, one last thing I want to talk about is I'm going to bring up I want to be able to take some of your frequently asked questions and, and concerns or whatever the Lord has pressed your heart I learn a lot guys believe it or not from what you even ask me I, I don't believe it I don't know anything on what the, other than what the Lord teaches me I don't I, I, I let him get the glory you, you thank me and I, I, I appreciate your 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 compliments but it's all the Lord's work 
You know, I just appreciate your fellowship. You're the fruit of my labor. If it brings you closer to the Lord and your wisdom is it's enhanced because of him and your knowledge in him and your mysteries are revealed because of him, it is the Lord's work that let the Lord get the praise and glory. I'm just a vessel. Um, but I really want to take what the Lord has uh, pressed your heart or con concerns that you may have or questions you may have. And if you send it to me via pay Facebook or Google Plus, I want to be able to bring that for the ministry as a whole and share it with you all and, and talk about it with you all. That way we'll all be able to learn and come together and glorify God. I also want to do something for those who, if the Holy Spirit moves your heart to do this, this is not for everybody, but if the Holy Spirit moves your heart to do this, I want to be able to read the book of John. I want to be able to go into the book of John and I want to fellowship with folks who want to read that work, that read the book of John daily with me. Uh, we're going to take portions of passages within the book of John, not whole chapters. Everyone's busy. And every day, we just try to, if we can, uh, maybe just start off once a week if we could, and just try to um, see what the Lord is teaching us in a passage. So I'll read a passage from the book of John, and I'll tell everyone uh, what I think the Lord is teaching from it or revealing, revealing about through that passage. And under the comments, just briefly write about what the Lord has shared with you and we can we will be astounded by what the Holy Spirit may share through another person and that we all collectively come together and learn so much about the what the Lord has said through one believer who may be revealed through a lesson and another believer a lesson may come through and another believer lessons come through and we're just reading these different lessons it's really a fellowship of a core group of people who really wants to grow within the Lord through the book of John. So we're, we're following Christ along with John, and we're just going to read passage after passage after passage, and just just really walk with the Lord and, and see what we can learn together uh, through the Holy Spirit. It'll be, it's gonna, I think that'll be a blessing for everyone. It's like I said, this it may not be for everybody, if the, but if the Holy Spirit moves your heart to do so, let's do it. Lastly, this is for the mature. These are, this right here is not for babies. This is only for the mature in Christ. We're going to talk about the book of Enoch in this ministry. There are mysteries, folks, that I want to tell you so bad, believe me, that the Holy Spirit has shared with me. But I cannot tell it to you yet. I want to so bad. In so much that when I want to tell it to you, I just hear this overwhelming restriction. This I get this overwhelming I can't even describe it. I just get held back from saying it. But I want to tell you mysteries, folks, that the Holy Spirit revealed to me, but I can't tell you uh, until a certain time. I'm guessing when the 10th King comes, because then, then the Lord would have validated all that he has taught me to say to you, that you may believe the, the, the greater thing that he's going to tell you, because he's giving you evidence to trust him. Not me. Trust him. From what he has said because where he wants to take you folks and what he wants to tell you is so mind-blowing oh it's so mind-blowing that common Christians will not be able to handle it but when he validates this ministry when he validates what he said through through me or through you through through this ministry when he validates it I would then be able to tell you uh, about what he has said, and it, it's so profound, uh, but I just can't tell you. But we're also going to eventually get into the book of Enoch as well, and this is only for the mature in Christ. I respectfully ask if you're, if you're a baby in the Lord, you cannot approach this book right now. If, you're, if you are a baby in the Lord, you cannot approach it. Only let the Holy Spirit guide you, and he is not one to uproot a plant before its maturity. He doesn't pull a fruit off a tree before the true, the, even the leaf gets there. He is a, he is a God of, of order and, and decency and, uh, and, and of timing. So please, uh, don't even pick this up. Don't even consider it. This is when the Lord, when the Holy Spirit moves us, then we get there. So these are just a couple of things that I want to talk about, folks. This is where I think I'm going to take the ministry. It's so good to see you all. Um, we are back at work now. The Lord has given us work to do. Uh, or he's now giving me work to do again. I'm really excited to get back to work for him. But I just want to let you know, folks, one thing. Our spiritual enemy is working. Our spiritual enemy is working. That's the reality. That is the reality. We are in it, folks. We are in it. And our enemy, our spiritual enemy is working. And what are you doing?
Okay, as the Apostle Paul said, we fight not against flesh and blood, and let us fight a good fight. All right, we got a lot ahead of us. So much is going down. Keep your hope and and keep your your faith in Christ Jesus. Put your mind on Him. Put your mind on Him. Because things are about to get real. It's about to get heavy. Tragedy is going to grow. Misery is going to increase. Suffering. But put your hope in Christ. And remember, we have a purpose. We have a purpose in Him. This is not it. This is definitely not it, guys. It's going to get better. And praise be to the Lord. Hallelujah to our God in heaven, our Father, where our Savior sits at His right hand, interceding for us through the Holy Spirit who also intercedes for us. That we know what's going on. That's our joy. All right. I love you all. It was so good to see you all. I can't wait to put my first Bible study back up and get back to work. And um, leave me a message, a comment, and or you now you can communicate with me via Facebook or Google Plus. All right. Talk to you soon. God bless you all. Later.